Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region, because business matters. I'm Gene Moreno. Today we'll focus on what help is available for small businesses as they get off the ground and what obstacles they must overcome. And we'll meet the owners of three local, very small companies, micro businesses perhaps, and talk about their journey to hanging out that shingle that says, we're open. Amanda Forrester is director of the Roanoke Regional Small Business Development Center. Carol Ann Deacon is a partner in Minds Blown Media. Brandy Underwood is with Cupcakes and Canines. And Shaquina Snyder, Chef Queen, operates Queen's Vegan Cafe. Several of our guests have also taken advantage of programs at the Small Business Development Center as they got off the ground. Amanda, before we uh, get into some of the particulars, tell people in a nutshell what the Roanoke Small Business Development Center is, where it's located, and, and how it's funded. We're here to help small businesses with the nuts and bolts of business. Our small businesses are technicians and they're very passionate about what they do. And when it comes to the business side, we're here to help them succeed, grow their revenues and um, give back to the economy here locally. We are funded um, partially by the Small Business Administration through a cooperative agreement and then the rest of our operating funds comes from local sources, so economic development, along with many corporations in the area who support our work um, so that we can do this free for small businesses. So are there, is, is there a cost for any of your uh, events or any of the webinars or anything that people can, can take advantage of? Most of our work is free. All of our advising is free. We do at times have to charge for training for cost um, because we don't have a budget for that, but. Um, very, very low cost. I think you were telling me once, Amanda, that you have an entrepreneurial background yourself, so this is right up your alley? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice break right now to, huh. to leave that world a little bit and help people other, other people pursue it. And before we talk to some of our guests about their business, uh, just how did things change in the teeth of the, of the pandemic? I know that you, uh, you told me that you, the offerings, the webinars, and whatever that became very popular and I guess one of the things was people really wanted to learn how to maybe pivot and stay viable during the pandemic. That's right and we also play a really large role in all of the aid that is available right now to small businesses because of our cooperative agreement with the Small Business Administration we help people um, get to know what aid is available for them but also to actually apply for it. The applications are not easy. They're not easy for us and they're certainly not easy for small business owners so a lot of our work right now is centered around that. All right, uh, Brandy Underwood is, uh, you, Cupcakes and Canines, great name, and you said you were the Cupcake Cottage until last year, so you said you yes. sort of did a pivot. Uh, why and uh, uh, what help did you need to make that pivot? Yeah, we actually rebranded right before the pandemic um, in February before COVID was a thing. Um, so about three years ago, I added dog treats to the store. So we do treats for people and pets. And I felt like it was time to rebrand, of course, not knowing there was going to be a pandemic. Um, and so we did get a lot of attention that first month before we shut down. Um, I went curbside from March to October and um, had to do an online store and learn how to set all that up. Um, so I definitely had to pivot from going just to a, from a brick and mortar retail location to more of an online presence. Mm -hmm. um, but that it, it's actually worked out really well for me because I continue to do online orders in addition to being open uh, at the brick and mortar store. And for sure, the Small Business Development Center has helped just, uh, you know, even sometimes just brainstorming ideas for the online portion of it is invaluable to have someone that I can bounce ideas off of, so. Right, so cupcakes and canines, so you sell treats for people and for dogs. Exactly, okay. yes. Our retail section is totally dedicated to dogs. So it's uh, either meant for the dogs or meant for people that love dogs. And we do have a few things for cats because we can't leave them out. <laughs> Amanda, when someone comes to you with an idea like this, hey, I want to change from a cupcake shop to uh, selling treats for people and for, for dogs. Um, <laughs> um, how do you approach stuff like that? Do you, do you tell people maybe, hey, pump the brakes, let's really think about this, or how do you help them lay out a plan? 
Yeah, well, I'm not a pump the brakes kind of gal. <laughs> Let's go. But, um, you know, we do want to be smart about it. And we just want to, our job is to ask questions to help people um, really bring to light what they already know. But talking about customer discovery, who is your customer? How do you serve them? Not necessarily what you want to do, but what do your customers need and want? Um, so we just walk through that process and make sure um, that that is in place, but also the legal side, right? Like what needs to happen when you change a name or you pivot, it doesn't have to be a brand change. It could just be a pivot and we can help people walk through that process to make sure they're doing it right. Hmm. I'm just wondering, Brandy, before we go to Sh Sh Shaquina, um, Chef Queen, um, uh, did you find <laughs> out even just changing the name was more of a hassle than you thought it might be? It was easier than I thought it would be. Um, you know, I thought there was going to be a lot of cost involved and, and that kind of type of thing, but um, I'm already a DBA. The Cupcake Cottage was already a doing business as. So it was a simple process to change it with the county. It was uh, actually just a small fee involved. I did have to change my account information at the bank. Also, that was really easy transition. Um, the biggest uh, change really was like my sign outside. I have a lighted sign. Uh, so the biggest cost and the biggest arrangement, I guess, was getting the sign outside change, but well worth the money spent uh, because it gets me a lot of attention. People are curious about the name. So. Sure, you see that name, you gotta come in to see if they're giving cupcakes yeah. to dogs or what the deal is. Uh, Shaquina Snyder, Chef Queen, you operate Queen's Vegan Cafe. Uh, tell us about that. How did that get all started? And are you a vegan yourself? <laughs> I absolutely am a vegan myself. Long story short, it started as a weight loss journey and me being the social butterfly that I am, I would try to go out to eat and I noticed that there were no decent <laughs> vegan options. So I was like, I'm going to bring some flavor to Roanoke. So it started off as meal prep and then it transitioned to catering, events, festivals, vegan consulting, private chef. Um, chef tables, now we're doing private chef tables um, for group settings, which is super awesome. It's a beautiful thing to see your food getting made right in front of you. You know where it's coming from. So it just kind of blossomed into this beautiful journey. <laughs> do you have a storefront or do you work out of your home? So I don't actually have a brick and mortar just yet. We're working on that. Um, so I rent out a commercial kitchen, the Leap Kitchen. And oh, okay, I the, okay, deliver, the, right. absolutely. So I deliver or people pick up. I bring the de deliciousness right to your doorstep. That's the Leap Kitchen where you can rent space and that's on the, mm -hmm. the West End Center. The Leap, they do the, um, the farmer's markets as well. Right. I started, I forgot, I did farmer's markets as well. So what type, when you went to the Small Business Development Center, what type of help mm -hmm. were you looking for? So I was looking for more so, I think marketing and things of that nature. I'm probably gonna have to revisit um, because during the pandemic, I did transition to more of a virtual um, services. So I was doing virtual um, vegan consulting, plant-based consulting, virtual cooking demos. So it was more so branding and advertisement and the whole aesthetics. But um, I definitely do need to revisit. I, I need some funds. <laughs> I think Amanda, I think Amanda's writing that down. Oh, you know, it's very, we have each other's email, so um, yes, <laughs> I need to before I go touch. to Before I go to Carol Ann Deacon, I just want to ask you, Amanda, quickly. It seems to me that a lot of very small businesses, they may have a great idea, maybe they've got a storefront, and they don't, they don't budget for marketing, though, to get the word out. Is that one of the biggest problems for that they, they don't know whether or not they have the money or should spend the money to do whatever marketing they need to do? Yeah, it's, it's both. It's hard. It, it's tough as a small business. You, you, you know, do you even have money to operate, right? Like that's what you're focused on when you open. And so oftentimes there's not a budget. There's lots of creative things though that we can do to help them in the, that first year or two. But then certainly at some point you need to have a marketing budget. And then the question is where do you set, spend it? And that's different for everybody. That's why we love um, those of us that work with the SBC, we love our services because it is personalized to that person. And while we do workshops and generalize, we're actually building out a marketing program that'll launch in September. Um, but still that one-on-one -on -one is important because it allows us to share ideas and um, brainstorm and really work on what their budget mm -hmm. is or could be. Are you talking about launching a marketing program, a more kind of a turnkey thing for small businesses maybe? 
it'll be more cohort based. So a group, you know, each year will join and they'll walk through the journey of marketing together because so many of our small businesses have to do marketing themselves. They're not at the point where they can hire it out. And we want to teach them to do that well mm -hmm. and have enough knowledge, right? To understand where to spend the money and how to do the work. All right, let's turn to Carolyn Deacon, a friend of mine, a musician, a fabulous actor, and um, talk about your business ventures, uh, Caroline Deacon Music and Minds Blown Media. And, and what do you like about being your own boss? You know, I made that decision to step out of corporate and I wanted the ability to design my own days basically around my daughter. Uh, after she was born, I just wanted to, I didn't want to, I wanted to be able to call the shots. And I've been doing it full time now for about 10 years and I love it. I've never looked back. I, um, I mean, it's it's not necessarily a linear path. I mean, you've got things that come up, and you definitely you know have to not mind a hustle. But I've been doing brand consulting. I did online businesses, like helping solopreneurs launch online businesses for years, and while doing my artistry as a singer and songwriter for sync licensing. So when the pandemic hit, I had all these musician friends and producers that were out of work, and some of them still are permanently. It's crazy. And I had a guy come up and say, hey, you know, help me with my business to build my videography business, like visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, why don't we just join forces? So that's how the Minds Blown Media came into it. Um, it was, it's just a culmination of uh, a way to make lemonade. Mm -hmm. So it's going really well. Is that so I've, I've kind of got my hands in a lot of different places. Right, I'm just wondering as a small business, is it, is, was it sort of when you merge with, uh, I think Ian Kyle is his name, is it, was it sort of tough to give up a little bit of that control or is it just did you realize you had to do that to get to the next step in your growth? I was, I was ready to, to give up that control. I, I think two heads, three heads, four heads are better than one. I love working with teams. It can be lonely, you know, hacking it out by yourself. So especially even as an artist, especially now, you know, you're by yourself so much. So I didn't mind giving up control. I welcome it. Um, I'm certainly not the shiniest apple in the barrel and don't claim to be. So I'm always looking for to, to line up with people who are a lot better and big thinkers. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things you do is you put together uh, songs or I don't want to call them yeah. jingles and sync licensing <laughs> words. You, you hope other people pick them up for what? Use in commercials, things like that? We actually just finished a really big project here in Roanoke, which we're super excited about it and can't release it yet. But um, it was a way to combine the scripting ability that I do like for acting and, and directing and um, putting music to it. So this particular one that we just finished up didn't have the jingles, which I hope are coming back, but we've done that for others. And really it's just, you know, being a, a songwriter and performer like I have been for years and then being a brand consultant, it's really easy to zoom in and say, what do you want your people to know? What's the feeling you want your business to bring? What's the takeaway? And then I get to work with all these crazy talented musicians and producers who put it to music. So I hope that we see as an economy and as a culture, more of that coming back where the company's name is used because you never forget a song. You know, people used to ask me when I was singing four or five hours a night, like, how do you remember all the words to those songs back in the day when I wanted to perform live late at night? Um, and it's because of the music, the sound. It's just, you can't shake it. So. It's, it works. It just, you get, you get an earworm in there. <laughs> mm. um, anybody else want to chime in on anything Caroline said or just talk about, uh, Brandy, talk about, um, you know, your business and, and, and where do you see it going? I mean, do you see any possibility down the road that you might open a second store or something like that? Uh, not right now. I, I mean, I'm a solo employee, it's me. I do everything from marketing to the baking and, and that kind of thing. So um, not looking to do a second location right now, but to expand my dog section, the retail section, if you will, I'm always looking into that um, and just, you know, offering as much as I can to what are my customers want. Um, I started out kind of uh, I did it a little timidly because I added a few dog treats and then when that went well, we added a few more and then when that went well, we added a lot more. Um, so I tiptoed into it, but now I'm, I'm fully in there and swimming along mm -hmm. and just hope to grow from that point. Before I forget, I wanted to ask you, Brandy, about uh, Shop Botetot. Yes. And that's something yeah, that you're, exactly. you're involved with launching that. Talk about that. And that's basically almost like a DRI or something in Roanoke where basically you, you're all in the same boat and you're all kind of supporting each other as a small business. Talk about that. 
Exactly. Um, yeah, we're a community-based group. Uh, you know, our whole motto is community over competition. So we started um, in February and just another way to help small businesses in the county, uh, especially during the pandemic. There's a lot of small businesses like me that have one or two or three employees, very small, and they just don't have the time, energy, or maybe even knowledge to do like social media marketing and that kind of thing. Um, and I, I like to think I'm very good at that. So um, that's what I started with and was offering to them. But now, um, as we discussed earlier this week, we've actually expanded into doing things like in real life life in person. Okay. Carolyn Deacon, I want to ask you, I just read something where it said that in the last year of the pandemic, I, I think women-owned businesses lost $800 billion worldwide in businesses. How can you, how did last year go for you, your type of business, uh, where you, were people doing less advertising so they needed your services less, or how did you adapt to the pandemic? In my experience, you know, people were, were more hesitant. We were just kind of suspended in this space of what I want to hold on to what I have because I don't know what's coming. And small small businesses were decimated by this lockdown. They were just wiped out. So I get it. So what we did to pivot was we became completely mobile. So our our costs are very competitive because of that. We do not have a brick and mortar and won't. Mm -hmm. um, I We travel to where we need to go and that makes us more cost effective because people do realize that telling a visual story, it's hard to be. It really is, especially when you add sound and all that. Um, but the cost or, you know, the marketing dollars, as, as Amanda had said, it's, it's, it's a challenge sometimes for micro business owners to come up with that. And nobody understands that better. Right. So. How about you, Chef Queen, uh, uh, Sh Sh Queen of Steiner, uh, the marketing dollars, are they, are, are they tough to come by or how are you kind of getting the word out there? So I understand that my clientele, my rural people, my rural tribe, they understand, they like visuals. So I know that going live and showing them what I'm doing and showing what I um, have planned goes very far with them. So apparently they like seeing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do um, understand to market towards that. However, I do have funds for marketing costs in addition um, to like event plannings and things of that nature, but it does get very, very pricey. Um, and you do have to understand how to um, figure out what is best in your interest. Cause sometimes there's like high costs for other things that doesn't fit your actual, right. um, your brand. So you got to figure out how to differentiate what are the skills that you need. So me going live and um, I guess hiring some people that I mm. um, trust can help out. And also I'm going to revisit <laughs> Miss Amanda there um, because I, I sometimes forget about mm -hmm. <laughs> the services that are out there. Well, I noticed but it, it is. It, it, it gets difficult. I noticed uh, Chef Queen on Facebook. You're not. You're not shy, uh, afraid of the camera. Let me put it that way. So, <laughs> I want, um, uh, Amanda. I noticed that uh, you, you've got courses for uh, you know managing WordPress site, understanding e-commerce, and all this. So, for a lot of small businesses, especially over the past year, did they just have to? Was it just? A, did they just realize, hey, I've got to do this. I've got to get more flexible i've got to get more involved with e-commerce i've got to use more social media for marketing if i can't afford to buy ads is that was that just a realization that a lot of businesses have come to absolutely i think they knew before but you know as a small business owner running your business day to day it often you know i'll do that tomorrow i'll do that tomorrow i'll do that tomorrow and obviously during the pandemic there was no tomorrow right you had you had to do it and so um, yes, so many people have, have done that and are just doing incredibly creative things. I, you know, I get to talk to a lot of them and it's just a pleasure to, to even hear their ideas and see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, uh, the, the type of business that you're in, um, you've got to travel out of the area uh, to get it done sometimes. I know you spent time in LA and Orlando area. Is that just the fact of where we are? And I'm just wondering with, with the advent of Zoom and all that, will that maybe help you stay home more often the, the, you know that and well you don't have to always travel to the coast it, it does it does and in a lot of you know a lot of what we do sometimes can be using curated carefully curated stock footage it's the videography that it needs to be in person so the music um the the, the sync licensing the the voiceovers all that i do right here in my little tiny little studio. You see that little thing right there? And then I have producers that I work with all over the country. That's completely digital and it doesn't require presence. But when 
when you're looking at a, like I was visiting with a, a small business in Orlando just last week, and when you're meeting with a husband and wife team that are competing with people that are literally right around the corner doing kind of the same thing, telling their story and getting their vibe is, is priceless. So we go down and we shoot it. Luckily, there's very inexpensive ways to do that. So um, I don't know that I will be staying here anymore. I love being here and working with the business owners in Roanoke, but um, I'm all about you know traveling and, and doing what we do and as, for as many people as we can. Mm-hmm. We just got a couple of minutes left. I wanted to, uh, Amanda, let's go back to you. Put on one of the things you you do is you put on a series of uh, targeted webinars and training events for women, for minorities, for different groups. Why take that approach? And is it just that every niche has their own challenges? It does, but it also gives people a place and a community, and that is incredibly important. I think Caroline mentioned earlier, it's a lonely place to be an entrepreneur. And so by creating likeness and bringing people together, all of the businesses can grow. And so that that's part of that. Um, and it's certainly part of the Small Business Administration's mission as well, particularly around um, minorities, veterans, and women. And so we, we focus a lot on that and, and go out into the community. We currently have a recovery project team intact. We grew from four to 12 people. So we have 12 on our team right now, and many of them are responsible for developing long-term programs. We have a minority business program that's gonna launch that is incredible, that we're very excited about, but as well for others. We have Vet Biz for veterans, um, and we have a women's conference coming up in September that we'll be releasing more on soon. So we do a lot of work in those areas. A women's conference. Yeah. Okay. It won't be called a women's conference, but that okay. the business language for it. Well, I think you need to get Chef Queen up there on the stage and uh, get her to bring some more food. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let, let, just have a, a couple of things. I want to ask real quickly, round robin. Uh, should, let's start with you, Chef Queen, Shaquina. What would be your advice for someone who's got a crazy idea to start a business? Where should they start? Okay, so first I want to say you probably should have some sort of idea thought out and know your bigger vision and then come to the small business so they can help you you can't just come out there and say hey i want to build a rocket ship you got to have a vision and a starting place and then see what process you need the steps you need to take to achieve your vision all right carol ann deacon let me ask you what would, what would be your advice for whatever your business uh, you want to get into if you want to start a business um, my advice would be to make sure you're passionate about it, to sustain it when it's not easy. You got, and the second piece of that was, and I tell this to my clients, you want to be able to articulate clearly answering the question, what's in it for me? What problem are you helping somebody solve? You know, like Queen, I mean, I already am going to contact you right after this is over about your food. I'm already in it. I love <laughs> cupcakes and canines, you know, and I know exactly what that's helping me do or achieve. Um, but I think sometimes that gets overlooked, just simplifying the language around it. What problem are you helping somebody solve? Get crystal clear and make sure you love helping them solve that mm -hmm. problem. Brandy Underwood, you, I, you said you've been in business now for eight years. You've been rebranded. What would be your, what would be your advice for someone who wants to start a business? I, I agree with both of those ladies. I mean, if you're passionate about what you do, then that'll get you through the hard times. I feel like um, your business idea needs to be unique for your community. I mean, I'm definitely unique. Maybe everybody doesn't understand it, but um, you know, with my tagline, treats for people and pets, I think that makes a little bit more sense to people. So maybe the name is confusing, but you know, with the added tagline, I think it makes sense. Definitely makes sense to me because I'm passionate about both things, baking and dogs. Um, so, it, you know, I think if it's personal and it's something that you're passionate about then you can make it work um, just be aware it's a lot more than like baking a cake <laughs> uh, you got a lot of paperwork and you know a lot of things that you're putting hours into that don't always equal into dollars and cents but it's a necessary thing to do accounting paperwork you know the whole thing so mm -hmm. having someone like the small uh, business development center to guide you in that part of it because that's not the part that i'm passionate about but it's a necessary part so having someone like that being able to help you uh, stay on track with the necessary stuff is a really nice um it's a really nice just to have someone an association to help you like that Okay, and uh, Amanda, to, to finish up, got about 30 seconds. Let's talk about how early in the process should somebody 
approach the Small Business Development Center if they have a germ of an, a germ of an idea? What, what point? Once they have an idea, right? They know what they wanna do or what they, what they think they wanna do. Let's come in and work through that. All right, Amanda Forrester, Carolyn Deacon, Brandy Underwood, and Shaquina Snyder, Chef Queen. We'll have to leave it there. Ladies, thanks for joining me this, today. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org. Thank you.